Chapter 14, Eyes, from the Jarvis Textbook. Structure and Function, External Anatomy. About one inch in diameter, the eye is the sensory organ of vision. Humans are very visual beings. The eyes carry visual data that are crucial for our survival, education, and pleasure. More than half of our neocortex is involved with processing visual information. Because this sense is so important to humans, the eye is well protected by the bony orbital cavity, surrounded with a cushion of fat. The eyelids are like two rapid window shades that further protect the eye from injury, strong light, and dust. The upper eyelid is the larger and more mobile one. The eyelashes are short hairs in double or triple rows that curve outward from the lid margins, filtering out dust and dirt. The palpebral fissure is the elliptical open space between the eyelids. When closed, the lid margins approximate completely. When open, the upper lid covers part of the iris. The lower lid margin is just at the limbus, the border between the cornea and the sclera. The canthus is the corner of the eye, the angle where the lids meet. At the inner canthus, the carnuncle is a small, fleshy mass containing sebaceous glands. Within the upper lid, tarsal plates are strips of connective tissue that give it shape. The tarsal plates contain the mebobian glands, modified sebaceous glands that secrete oily lubricating material into the lids. This stops the tears from overflowing and helps form an airtight seal when the lids are closed. The exposed part of the eye has a transparent protective covering, the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is a thin mucous membrane folded like an envelope between the eyelids and the eyeball. The palpebral conjunctiva lines the lid and is clear, with many blood vessels. It forms a deep recess and then folds back over the eye. The ball bar conjunctiva overlays the eyeball with the white sclera showing through. At, <clears throat> at the limbus, the conjunctiva merges with the cornea. The cornea covers and protects the iris and pupil. The lacrimal apparatus provides constant irrigation to keep the conjunctiva and cornea moist and lubricated. The lacrimal gland in the upper outer corner of the eye secretes tears. The tears wash across the eye and are drawn up evenly at the as the lid blinks. They drain into the puncta visible on the upper and lower lids at the inner canthus. They then drain into the nasolacrimal sac through the half-inch long nasolacrimal duct and empty into the inferior meatus inside the nose. A tiny fold of mucous membrane prevents air from being forced up the nasolacrimal duct when the nose is blown. Extraocular muscles. Six muscles attach the eyeball to its orbit and serve to direct our eyes to the points of interest. These extraocular muscles give the eyeball straight and rot rotary movement. The, fourth, the four straight or rectus muscles are the superior, inferior, lateral, and medial rectus muscles. The two slanting or oblique muscles are superior and inferior muscles. Each muscle is coordinated or yoked with one in the other eye. This ensures that when two eyes move, their axis always remains parallel. This is called conjugate movement. Parallel axes are important because the human brain can tolerate seeing only one image. Although some animals can perceive two different pictures through each eye, humans have a binocular, single image visual system. This occurs because our eyes move as a pair. For example, the two yoked muscles that allow looking to the far right are the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus. Movement of the EOMs is stimulated by three cranial nerves. The abducens nerve, which is cranial nerve 6, innervates the lateral rectus muscle, which abducts the eye. The trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 4, innervates the superior oblique muscle, and the oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve 3, innervates all the rest, the superior, inferior, and medial rectus, as well as the inferior oblique muscles. Note that the superior oblique muscle is located on the superior aspect of the eyeball, but when it contracts, it enables the person to look downward and inward. Internal anatomy. The eye is an asymmetric sphere composed of three concentric coats, the outer fibrous sclera, the middle vascular choroid, and the inner nervous retina. Inside the retina is the transparent vitreous body. The only parts accessible to examination are the sclera anteriorly and the retina through the ophthalmoscope. The outer layer. The sclera is a tough protective white covering. 
It's continuous anteriorly with smooth, transparent cornea, which covers the iris and pupil. The cornea is part of the refracting media of the eye, bending incoming light rays to focus them on the inner retina. The cornea is thin, transparent, and very sensitive to touch. Contact with a wisp of cotton stimulates a blink in both eyes. This is called the corneal reflex. The trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve 5, carries the afferent sensation to the brain, and the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7, carries the efferent message that stimulates the blink. The middle layer. The choroid has dark pigmentation to prevent light from reflecting internally and is heavily vascularized to deliver blood to the retina. Anteriorly, the choroid is continuous with the ciliary body and the iris. The muscles of the ciliary body control the thickness of the lens. The iris functions as a diaphragm, varying the opening at its center, the pupil. This controls the amount of light admitted into the retina. The muscle fibers of the iris contract the pupil in bright light and accommodate for near vision. They dilate the pupil in dim light and accommodate for far vision. The color of the iris varies from person to person. The pupil is round and regular. Its size is determined by a balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic chains of the automatic nervous system. Stimulation of the parasympathetic branch through the cranial nerve 3 causes constriction of the pupil. Stimulation of the sympathetic branch dilates the pupil and elevates the eyelid. As mentioned earlier, the pupil size also reacts to the amount of ambient light and accommodation or focusing on an object or focusing an object on the retina. The lens is a biconvex disc located just posterior to the pupil. The transparent lens serves as a refracting medium, keeping a viewed object in continual focus on the retina. Its thickness is controlled by the ciliary body. The lens bulges for focusing on near objects and flattens for far objects. The lens is a Sorry, the anterior chamber is posterior to the cornea and in front of the iris lens. The posterior chamber lies behind the iris to the sides of the lens. These contain clear, watery, aqueous humor that is produced continually by the ciliary body. The continuous flow of fluid serves to deliver nutrients to the surrounding tissues and drain metabolic waste. Intraocular pressure is determined by a balance between the amount of aqueous produced and resistance to its outflow at the angle of the anterior chamber. The inner layer. The retina is the visual receptive layer of the eye in which light waves are changed into nerve impulses. It surrounds the soft, gelatinous, vitreous humor. The retinal structures viewed through the ophthalmoscope are the optic disc, the retinal vessels, and the general background, as well as the macula. The optic disc, or optic papilla, is the area in which fibers from the retina coverage to form the optic nerve. Located towards the nasal size of, sides of the retina, it has these characteristics. A color that varies from creamy yellow-orange to pink, a round or oval shape, margins that are distinct and sharply demarcated, especially on the temporal side. A physiological cup, the smaller circular area inside the disc where the blood vessels exit and enter. The retinal vessels normally include a paired artery and vein, extending to each quadrant, growing progressively smaller in caliber as they reach the periphery. The arteries appear bright red and narrower than the veins. They have a thin silver of light on them. Thin sliver of light on them. The arterial light reflex. The general background of the fundus varies in color, depending on the person's skin color. The macula is located on the temporal side of the fundus. It is slightly darker pigmented region surrounding the fovea centralis, which is the area in, of sharpest and keenest vision. The macula receives and transduces light from the center of the visual field. Visual pathways and visual fields. Objects reflect light. The light rays are refracted through the transparent media, the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous body, and strike the retina. The retina transforms the light stimulation into nerve impulses that are conducted through the optic nerve and the optic tract to the visual cortex of the occipital lobe. The image formed on the retina is upside down and reversed from its actual appearance in the outside world. An object in the upper temporal visual field of the right eye reflects its image onto the lower nasal area of the retina. All retinal fibers collect to form the optic nerve but they maintain the same spatial arrangement with nasal fibers running medially and temporal fibers running laterally. 
At the optic chiasm, nasal fibers from both temporal and visual fields cross over. The left optic tract now has fibers from the left half of each retina, and the right optic tract contains fibers only from the right. Thus, the right side of the brain looks at the left side of the world. Visual reflexes. Pupillary light reflex. The pupillary light reflex is the normal constriction of pupils when bright light shines on the retina. It is subcortical reflex arc. We have no conscious control over it. The sensory afferent link is the cranial nerve 2, and the motor efferent path is the cranial nerve 3. When one eye is exposed to bright light, a direct light reflex, constriction of the pupil, and consensual light reflex, simultaneous constriction of the other pupil occur. This happens because the octet nerve carries the sensory afferent message in and then synapses with both sides of the brain. For example, the light reflex in a person who is blind in one eye. For example, consider the light reflex in a person who is blind in one eye. Stimulation of the normal eye produces both direct and consensual light reflex. Stimulation of the blind eye causes no response because the sensory afferent in CN2 is destroyed. Fixation. Fixation is a reflex direction of the eye towards an object attracting our attention. The image is fixed in the center of the visual field, the fovea centralis. This consists of very rapid ocular movements to put the target back on the fovea and somewhat slower, smooth pursuit movements to track the target and keep its image on the fovea. These ocular movements are impaired by drugs, alcohol, fatigue, and inattention. Accommodation. Accommodation is an adaption of the eye for near vision. It is accomplished by increasing the curvature of the lens through the muscles of the ciliary body. Although the lens cannot be observed directly, the components of accommodation that can be observed are convergence, motions toward, of the axes of the eyeball and pupillary constriction. Infants and children. At birth, eye function is limited, but it matures fully during the early years. Peripheral vision is intact in the newborn infant. The macula, the area of keenest vision, is absent at birth but is developing by four months and is mature by eight months. Eye movements may be poorly coordinated at birth. By three to four months of age, the infant establishes binocularity and can fixate on a single image with both eyes simultaneously. Most babies, 80%, are born with farsighted. This gradually decreases after seven to eight years of age. In structure, the eyeball reaches adult size by eight years. At birth, the iris shows little pigment and the pupils are small. The lens is nearly spherical at birth, growing flatter throughout life. It is consistently, its consistency changes from that of a soft plastic at birth to rigid glass in old age. The aging adult. Changes in eye structure cause distinct facial changes of the aging person. Loss of skin elasticity causes wrinkling and drooping, fat tissues and muscle atrophy, and the external eye structures appear as on page 307. Lacrimal glands involute, causing decreased tear production and feeling of dryness and burning. On the globe itself, an infiltration of degenerated lipid material shows around the limbus. Pupil size decreases. The lens loses elasticity, becoming hard and glass-like. The glass-like quality decreases the ability of the lens to change shape to accommodate for near vision, a condition termed presbyopia. By 40 years of age, 50% of people have pre presbyopia and need printed images magnified. By 70 years of age, the normally transparent fibers of the lens begin to thicken and yellow. This is the beginning of a cataract. Inside the globe, the vitreous is not renewed as continuously as the aqueous humor. Thus, floaters appear from debris that accumulates. Visual acuity diminishes gradually after 50 years and even more so after 70 years. Near vision is commonly affected by the decreased power of accommodation in the lens. In the early 40s, a person may have blurred vision and difficulty reading. The aging person also needs more light to see because of a decreased adapta adaptation to darkness. And this condition may affect the function of night driving. All of these changes affect safety, increase the risk of falls and other accidental injuries, and challenge the ability to live independently. In older adults, the most common causes of decreased visual functioning are cataract formation, a clouding of the crystalline lens from a clumping of proteins. This is curable with lens replacement surgery. Age is the primary risk factor. 
about 17.2% of Americans over 40 years of age have cataracts, and by age 80, more than half of adults have cataracts. Women also have a 37% higher risk than men. Glaucoma. An optic nerve neuropathy characterized by loss of peripheral vision caused by an increase in intraocular pressure. Age is the primary risk. Over 2.2 million adults over 40 years of age have the disease, and another 2 million do not know they have it. New evidence shows a higher risk for women. Age-related macular degeneration, also known as AMD. A loss of central vision caused by yellow deposits, drusen, and neovascularity in the macula. AMD risk rises sharply with older age and women have a slightly greater risk. With AMD, the person is in, unable to read books or papers, sew, or do fine work and has difficulty distinguishing faces. When the lifestyle is oriented around these activities, loss of central vision can cause great distress. Peripheral vision is not affected for a while the person can manage self-care and not become completely disabled. Diabetic retinopathy, the leading cause of blindness in working age adults 25 to 74. This results in vision impairment with difficulty driving, reading, managing diabetes treatment, and other self-care. In the United States, the prevalence has decreased as a result of improved management of hyperglycemia, hypertension, and lipid levels. However, the worldwide prevalence will grow because of increasing obesity rates, increasing lifespan, and improved detection of diabetes. Culture and genetics. Racial differences are evident in the palpebral fissures. Fissures. People of Asian origin are often identified by their characteristic eyes, whereas the presence of narrowed palpebral fissures in non-Asian individuals may be a diagnostic of a serious congenital disorder, Down syndrome. Culturally based variability exists in the color of the iris and retinal pigmentation, with darker irids having darker retinas behind them. Individuals with light retinas generally have better night vision but can have pain in an environment that has too much light. Racial variation in disease. Cataracts occur at a higher prevalence among whites compared to blacks and Hispanics. However, a greater prevalence exists among younger black females compared with younger white females. The prevalence of primary open angle glaucoma is three times higher in blacks, with whites and Hispanics having similar rates. Other evidence shows Hispanics having rates similar to those of blacks. AMD is more prevalent among whites, especially among the very old over 75 years of age and causes the leading form of blindness in whites. Diabetic retinopathy, wow, diabetic retinopathy is a complication of diabetes mellitus caused by damage to blood vessels in the retina. There is a slightly elevated prevalence rate among blacks and Hispanics compared to whites. Visual impairment is not being able to see letters on the line 2050 or being below on the eye chart. The prevalence rate are 50% higher for those living below the poverty level than among other adults. Differences among racial groups occur when asked two questions. Do you have any trouble seeing, even when wearing glasses or contacts, and are you blind or unable to see at all? Among middle adults, 45 to 64 years, Native Americans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and a mixed people of race, and a people of mixed race reported higher prevalence of visual impairment than did whites. Among other older adults, 65 years of age, prevalence of visual impairment was highest among Native Americans, Chinese Americans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Central and South Americans. Thus, racial disparities exist among major eye diseases and in visual impairment. In summary, blacks and Hispanics have higher levels of vision loss and less access to health care than do whites. Subjective data. Vision difficulty. Decreased acuity, blurring, blind spots. Pain. Strabismus. Diplopia. Redness or swelling. Watering and discharge, history of ocular problems, glaucoma, use of glasses or contact lenses, and patient-centered care. Please see page 287 in your Jarvis textbook where there is a chart showing what the examiner should ask and the rationale for asking. There is also vocab located in the chart that you're going to want to check out. I will continue after these charts, but you're going to want to look at this. Trust me. It's most of the chapter. I'm just helping you out a little bit. I'm scrolling down. Still scrolling. Going to pause. All right, guys. Yeah, the, the rest of the chapter is pretty much all pictures after looking at it. So uh, anyway, I got the anatomy out of the way for you. So 
Have a look at chapter 14. Bye.